In this video I'm going to show you how to use an F table, uh, presumably to get a confidence interval or more likely to come to the conclusion in a hypothesis test. Okay, so the F test uh, comes up quite a bit in regression and actually in various contexts. So I thought it'd be worth it to kind of talk about the table very quickly and show you uh, an example of one of these tables and how they work. So first off, all these tables should have either a good description or a nice picture. And it's not just for show, it's really to show you how the tables working, what the values in the table actually mean, so that you can kind of piece together what all these things actually are telling you. So just a quick overview of the F distribution. Um, the F distribution has two parameters. Sometimes they'll ca they're called the degrees of freedom one and two. Sometimes they're called degrees of freedom numerator and denominator. This table goes ahead and gives you both of those names, so there is uh, no confusion. Okay, so now once you've determined what your degrees of freedom one and two are, depending on the type of problem and application that will be, uh, that could be, uh, there's different ways of getting those values. But once you've determined that, that's kind of beyond what I want to talk about here. What, once you've determined that, you go over to the first row and you find your degrees of freedom 1 or degrees of freedom numerator. Let's arbitrarily say it's 5. And then you go to the first column and you get your degrees of freedom 2 or degrees of freedom uh, denominator. Let's say that's 15. Once you have both of those, you square in and you get your F value. And now we can talk about what this means and how this connects back to this picture up here. So 2.90, so what is that? That number is actually this number right here. This number that cuts off this region from this region. Okay, so what is this region? What's, what is that region? Well, the area to the right of this number in this entire table is 5% or 0.05. So if you're doing a hypothesis test where your level of significance is 5%, this is the correct table to use. And every number here, every F value here, is useful only for that type of uh, for that level of significance, 5%. Okay, so 2.90, that's basically, let me put it down in some probability notation. It's saying that the probability of getting an F value where your degrees of freedom are 5 and 15 greater than 2.90 that's the number I got from here, right? equals exactly 0.05. So that's what this picture is showing us as well, but this is what this picture is saying in kind of a, uh, a different notation. Um, so all these values here, you can replace them here, and also obviously the degrees of freedom would be different as well. <coughs> So what this does for you is oftentimes you're trying to make a decision in a hypothesis test, whether to reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. What this value will tell you is the cutoff. Any t test statistic greater than this value or any of these, depending on which one's appropriate for the test you're doing, will cause you to reject the null hypothesis. So once again, an a test statistic greater than the value 2.90 would cause me to reject HO. Less than 2.90, and I would fail to reject HO at 5% level of significance. That's very important. So if you're using 1% level of significance, or 10%, or any other alpha level, you would have to use a totally new table just for that level of significance. So 
that that's the thing with the F table. It takes up a lot of space, so one table per level of significance. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Um, Till next time, subscribe, like, and share, and have a great day.